wake up, it won't stop in Ukraine. It's an alarm call that's ringing across the Baltic states about neighboring Russia. From the northeast tip of Estonia, through the forests of Latvia, to the southeastern corner of Lithuania. Can you patrol on that, on the, on the wood? Yeah. Many here are worried about what might follow Russia's war in Ukraine. War is already happening, uh, so it's not a question, is Russia going to be aggressive? It already is aggressive. We take a journey along NATO's eastern border with Russia, where civilians are mobilizing to deter the threat, and ask if the UK and other allies should be doing similar. In the far northeast of Estonia lies the city of Narva. Russia sits just across the river. A crossing point called the Friendship Bridge still connects the two foes. Though unlike most of the rest of the Baltics, some of the residents here are sympathetic to Moscow. It's hard to believe that this is the very edge of NATO's border and Russia is just a few metres behind me. But any attempt by Russian forces to cross that line would trigger an Allied response. And not just a professional one. A growing number of civilians are also learning how to defend themselves. These part-time soldiers on an island off Estonia's west coast are dubbed the SAS. It stands for Saturdays and Sundays, because that's when they train. And Their commander has a warning for Moscow. It will be bloody mess if you come here. We will definitely kill as many of you as possible. And, and what's your message to other NATO countries that maybe aren't doing as much to mobilise Wake up. Their... It won't stop in Ukraine. If we don't stop them there, they will come further and further. Some of these volunteers joined the Defence League in part because of the war in Ukraine and they say they're prepared to fight should Russia attack. I have to take the weapon and trying to protect my family, my home. And why is your island so important to you? It's my home. It's easy. You need home, yeah. It's a good place. <laughs> Hiuma Island would be an attractive target for Vladimir Putin in any war with the West giving him the ability to control access to the Baltic Sea. It's the kind of threat that plays on the minds of NATO generals. The this top officer the says the chance of any attack on Allied territory would grow should Russia succeed in willing. Ukraine. How seriously we take the supporting Ukraine. If we give up in Ukraine, so are we giving up also our own defence? So it's, it's actually it's quite critical and should be not separated. The danger posed by Moscow is well understood across the Baltic states, where they've just agreed to build a physical defensive line along their eastern frontier. All three nations were previously part of the Soviet Union, a collective trauma. We're in Latvia, which shares a border not just with Russia, but also Belarus, which is a key Russia ally. And that's why this place is, like the other Baltic states, very, very nervous about their neighbours. They've been warning about the threat posed by Russia to the rest of NATO since they joined and were pretty much ignored up until about 2014, when Russia first invaded Ukraine. And that was the first big wake up call. NATO belatedly started to rebuild its defences, including by sending troops to the Baltics. But then came Russia's full-scale war and an even bigger alarm bell for Europe. Bam. 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 It prompted Latvia to reintroduce conscription. Some of these recruits are part of that program. At a training camp, they practice how to counter an ambush with pretend gunfire and even an imaginary grenade. This 18-year-old is a voluntary conscript. I think that every man in the world needs to at least try military life. The main aim of this expanding force is to deter an attack. 
I visited our troops and there. It's a threat Latvia's foreign minister underlined as he too championed the merits of conscription at a recent security conference. War is already happening. Uh, so it's not a question, is Russia going to be aggressive? It already is aggressive. The point of the draft is to uh, beef up capable and equipped and trained reservists. And do you think it would make a difference if Britain sort of started doing conscript, for example? Uh, I think it would make a difference if any uh, uh, European country, and of course the larger countries, it would make a bigger difference. But the UK's Defence Secretary is against the idea of training up any citizen army. Everyone knows that in a wartime, First World War, Second World War scenario, of course countries have to make other arrangements. That's not the position we're in now. We have absolutely no plans to, to do that now. Yet perhaps lessons can be drawn from Latvia, where conscription is about so much more than guns and uniforms. I think that the most important thing is to awaken the desire to protect and defend your country to awaken the patriots in them so that they have the courage to stand up against the enemy if needed. Driving through the Baltics, the sense of unity is clear. Our final stop is the southwest corner of Lithuania, which borders Kaliningrad, a heavily fortified Russian exclave that also sits next to Poland. The three territories are connected by a, an area called the Suvalki Gap, which also borders Belarus, a key Russian ally. And the thinking by NATO officials is that should Moscow seize the Suvalki Gap, it could effectively cut off access for NATO to all three Baltic states, so it's seen as a real choke point. But the crossing here between Lithuania and Kaliningrad is also an important transit point. The only way trucks can travel by road to the Russian mainland is through NATO territory and then into Belarus. The same's true for people. Passports are checked. It's orderly, not hostile. But the fence that divides the two sides is closely monitored. The white post marks out Lithuania, red and green for Russia, with a river running in between. The Lithuanian border guards that we've been with said that they patrol on the other side of the fence but on this side of the river all the way along this line looking out for any kind of suspicious activity about two or three times a year. People try to cross this border illegally and they are then caught. There are cameras operating 24 hours a day and also patrol towers that again scan the area looking for anything out of the ordinary. Lithuania's president summed up this region's response to the looming threat next door. All Baltic countries, Poland and other countries of the eastern flank of the NATO, uh, do a lot in order to use all the possibilities of collective defense system uh, called NATO. But we also do a lot individually by increasing our defense spending, by closely cooperating with our neighbors, and my country is especially active in this field. It's why citizens in Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania are preparing for a war they hope never to fight. But their ability to deter Russia may depend on whether other allies follow suit. Deborah Haynes, Sky News, The Baltics.